Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the 2024 macroeconomics exam. This is question number one from set two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit four. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. So this question starts off with the country of Moneyland. They are in equilibrium and the actual unemployment rate equals the natural rate of unemployment. First of all, we have to draw an ASAD model. We're going to mark the current real output Y1 and the current price level PL1. We're also going to mark the full employment level of real output YF. Since the unemployment rate equals the natural rate of unemployment, that means we are drawing an ASAD model in long run equilibrium. Let's go ahead and start drawing our graph with real GDP on that X axis price level on the y-axis, a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, and at the intersection we find our price level labeled PL1 and our equilibrium real output Y1. And if you have all that there, you get your first point. To get the second point, we're going to add in our long run aggregate supply curve. It is at the intersection between the SRAS and the AD, and below that we're going to mark YF, our full employment level of output. The fact that YF and Y1 are equal shows that they are at long run equilibrium. For part B, we are told that consumer spending decreases from $110,000 down to $100,000. And at the same time, disposable income for consumers in Moneyland falls from $135,000 down to $110,000. Based on the numbers we have in this equation, we are going to calculate the marginal propensity to consume in Moneyland. And we have to show our work. Remember the formula for the marginal propensity to consume is the change in consumer spending divided by the change in disposable income. And so when we plug in the numbers and do the math here, negative $10,000 divided by negative $25,000 equals a marginal propensity to consume of 0.4. And if you have that, you get your next point. For part B double I, we have to show the impact of the decrease in consumer spending in Moneyland on the graph that we already drew in part A. And we're going to mark the new real output Y2 and the new price level PL2. Now it's helpful to remember that consumer spending is an AD shifter. So a reduction in consumer spending is going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the left. Go ahead and draw that in and mark that new price level PL2 and the new real output Y2. And if you have that, you get your next point. For part C, we are asked how the money land economy will adjust in the long run after the change in consumer spending if there are no policy actions taken by the government or the central bank. Remember, in the long run, the economy will return to full employment. That happens because the short run aggregate supply curve is going to shift because of changes in wages and other input prices. When there's an inflationary gap, wages and other resource prices will increase and the short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the left. When we have a recessionary gap, wages and other resource prices will decrease and the short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. That leads us to our answer here. Since there is now a recessionary gap, wages and other resource prices will fall. The short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the right until real output equals YF. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your next point. For part D, we are told that instead of doing nothing, the central bank is going to address the recessionary gap caused by the reduction in consumer spending. We are told that they have an ample reserve system in money land, and we are asked to identify a monetary policy action that the central bank can take. Remember that we have two ample reserves tools you can pick here, and that is to change administered rates or change interest on reserves, which is one of the administered rates. If there's an inflationary gap, we're going to increase interest, and when there's a recessionary gap, we'll decrease interest. So that leads us to our answer here, decrease administered rates or decrease interest on reserves. Either one of those answers will get you your next point. For part E, we're going to draw out our reserves market graph and show the impact of the monetary policy tool that we just identified. Let's go ahead and draw out that graph. On the y-axis, we're going to have the policy rate, and on the x-axis, we're going to have the quantity of reserves. The demand for reserves has a flat portion up at the top, a downward sloping portion in the middle, and a flat portion once again on the lower end. The supply for reserves is going to intersect the demand curve on the lower flat portion, and at the intersection between those two curves, we find our policy rate. And if you have all that there, you get your first point. Now for the second point, you're going to show the impact of the monetary policy action you just identified. If you said decrease interest on reserves, you'll shift the lower portion of the demand curve and show a new lower policy rate. If you said decrease administered rates, then you also lower the upper portion as well. And either one of those shifts will get you the second point on that graph. For part FI, we are asked how the policy rate change that we just identified will change the quantity of national savings in Moneyland. 
If we take a look at the savings supply from our loanable funds market graph, we can see that there's a direct relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of money saved in a nation. That means when the interest rate falls, the quantity of savings will also fall. And that leads us to our answer here, decrease. But you don't get a point yet because you also have to get the assertion point on FII to get this point. For FII, we are asked what's going to happen to the unemployment rate, and this time we have to explain. Remember, lower interest rates mean more gross investment. More gross investment means aggregate demand shifts to the right and increases the equilibrium real output. More equilibrium real output means lower unemployment. That means the assertion for FII is decrease. And if you have that, you get your first point for part F. The second point for part F comes for the correct explanation for FII. So here's my explanation there. Decrease because the lower policy rate will decrease interest rates, which leads to more gross investment, which shifts aggregate demand to the right and increases real output. And if you have an explanation, something like that, you get your last point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the macroeconomics exam from 2024, set two, question number one. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.